Oh, oh your ring. Yeah. My ring. I mean, this is coolish, but it's oh, sorry, less impressive than that. Very <laughs> no, I don't feel. She's a Russian, uh, actually, she's a Russian uh, designer living in Paris. All right. She used to date uh, Jean-Charles de Castelbajac, and she changed from jewelry design to sculpture now. Okay. Mm. Bring her on the podcast next time, or yeah, we can tag yeah. her. Yeah, cool. I want to hang out with people like Riz Ahmed, who uh, I went to meet, <laughs> with. I went to a Rami Youssef show, and I want to tag Riz Ahmed because he didn't see my DMs. He's an, uh, I love uh, his wife's Fatima's book also. You should make a movie based on her book. I don't I need to know what the book is. But. So um, but what, did, what stood out for you? What stood out for you on Stephen's Wikipedia? Actually, his interest by, uh, by uh, what stood out among, I mean, all yeah. the, you know, well done for, uh, for everything you've done, you know, production and documentary. What stood out to me on a personal consumer level is your interest actually in the, in the, in the marginal stories. Mm -hmm. Of, uh, ah. of of the personalities that are in the media that maybe I come across as a, as a consumer of news, yeah. but don't dwell in. What is your initiative to dwell on these subjects? Actually, what is your passion? Uh, I, I I don't know if I've done that much with like margin totally marginalized communities, but um, I'd say Amanda Knox is marginalized. Amanda well. Knox <laughs> is no, and it's so yeah. She could be marginalized yeah. in some in some respects. People forgot but... who Amanda Knox is. Stephen made have produced the documentary about it's a murder mystery in Italy. Uh -huh. Oliver's favorite murder mystery. Uh, yeah, well, it was big. Uh, I was quite young at the time, but it was big uh, news, wasn't it? Um, Amanda Knox. And it was Meredith Kutcher was the young British lady who was, who yeah. was embroiled in all of that. Have you um, DM'd any of them? Well, Meredith Kutcher died, yeah. so oh, sorry, no. Right. Um, but uh, I mean, it's it's she's I imagine quite a good um, person to do a documentary about, right? Because she's a very complex character, like almost in <laughs> instantaneously in the British press. Yeah, like people took one perspective or the other on on what unfolded there. Yeah, that's why I always say to people, if you've only read the British news. I cannot fault you for thinking that she would be guilty because that would be all that you would have read. Yeah. However, unfortunately, yeah. British media. I'm not saying the FT or anything like that. The but FT doesn't report on crime. Oh, well, that's, that's, all, oh, yeah, yeah. that's really good. Yeah, no yeah, true yeah. crime. Probably. Oh. Well, white, well yeah, actually, white collar crime. Yeah, right? you should report on white. There's a good podcast <laughs> but, on Crispin Odie that I heard. Yeah, sure, sure. But, yeah. you know, like, yeah, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the misdeeds of, of, of business executives, but not in the kind of way that the prurient raid that yeah. maybe not the, the Daily Mail, the Daily Mail of, does. Yeah. yeah. Fair. They, they called her, I think the tabloids called her like Foxy Noxy. Oh, we're back in Knox, yeah. Um, yeah. And he's, the he's still being trolled by Amanda Knox fans. No, no, that, that has ended years ago. So I, I actually yeah. haven't seen the documentary. What what does it portray her as like? I mean, obviously, she's a troubled character. But... She's not a troubled character. Okay, she's, she's a very a cool character. character. No, no, no. I mean, the documentary, if I understood, mm -hmm. I didn't watch it, defends her. Defends yeah. her uh, case. I would say we present, you know, both sides of the, the story and in the end conclude that she is absolutely not guilty at all mm -hmm. but you should still watch it on netflix 93 yeah. mm -hmm. minutes pretty easy yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so. me and samira went to the wolseley yesterday the new one in the city of london because yeah. you wrote about it so we went for lunch uh, we went better than breakfast, breakfast there, actually yeah. great onion soup where is it it's in the london bridge opposite london it's bridge just, the no just north of london bridge. You, okay yeah, i didn't gone. read his uh, article about it what was his impressions of it what uh, before i tell you mine because i love the original yeah. wordsley so yeah well, I, well i'm not like a kind of like food reviewer or anything like that i write about like the business of of these things the okay. business of food so the, yeah the business the of food, food the business of cigarettes the business mm. it's kind of sin stock reporter is what it's kind oh. of called right? are you doing like the colored vapes i feel like there's I've, been a lot I, of I wrote, I, I, yeah i wrote a piece uh back in the like uh, the beginning of this year about that like where we kind of had the financials leaked to us of the companies behind it and they're all these strange companies out in Jewel, Shenzhen in right. China oh okay not about Jewel G J U -U Jewel was the one a few right. years ago that's since yeah. I mean it's oh really yeah. okay, okay so Jewels were not yeah. cool anymore Jewels are not cool anymore who's the market leader I don't smoke the market the market leader is uh, these brands called like Elf Bar or in the US they're called like EB Design Lost Mary they're, they're basically ever changing panoply of brands but they're largely produced by like these Chinese um, companies okay. in Shenzhen what shit is in them that's a very good question <laughs> 
<laughs> like what is giving it the color? Like That's is it just like uh, there's like dye? there's lots of additives and flavors and stuff like that. Um, like just and, chemical. And then things. and then a fairly large amount of nicotine. Okay, which mm. is the kind of stuff you probably don't want your 16 mm. year old. Mm. Yeah. Um, and what's the vibe in the Financial Times these days? Like because I spot people from a distance reading the FT because it's colored. It's like the pink. <laughs> Why is it like <laughs> bankers like... tucking it under their? Yeah, yeah. Things. other papers <laughs> you can't spot from a distance. That's yeah. true. Or, or weekend fashionistas who yeah. who read them only on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this there's bi- separate, bifurcates. Bi- yeah. and, but how to spend it is in a different color. It's just like normal magazine. It's been rebranded, I think, HTSI. Mm. Oh. It, yes. It's yeah. a rich people magazine, just yes. what to spend money on. Yeah, what, the, how to gift it, how to yeah. spend it. How it to, makes, yeah, how it to makes more it. money than the normal FT, I heard. The magazine. <laughs> the how to spend it. Cause... Oh, because they could add, they could do good expensive ads yeah, in there, yeah, probably, yeah. right? Like Cartier watches or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiffany's, Cartier, uh, Rolexes. I yeah, mean, yeah. you should move there, Oliver. To how to spend it. Yeah. Joe Ellison is a friend of yours. I don't, I don't really know Joe Ellison, but really? I have a, immense admiration for Joe Ellison. She's done a good job. She's a brilliant, brilliant editor. Editor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was following her when she had only an editorial, you know, uh, mm. dire, an, uh, uh, page. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden, a few years back, she became like the lead editor of the magazine. I'm yeah. like, hooray for her. She's a tough cookie. Very smart. Very, very smart. Let's goes, not criticize yeah. her on a podcast. She goes to all the fashion shows. <laughs> People use her she name. She has to a good get, life. People use her name to get into fashion shows sometimes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you use would, that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it might be way. difficult for you to pass this out. Yeah. You know, by the way, I found out that the best way to meet people who won't hang with me otherwise is to pretend to interview them for my magazine. And then <laughs> is this what this is? <laughs> for yeah, the podcast? that's why we're doing this. Because, yeah. like, people like Lot- Lottie Moss or uh, Riz Ahmed, I hope I, I'm, sometimes I need to interview them, but then they forget it's an interview. And then you just become friends. Yeah. Interesting, a blurring of the line between I, journalists. I don't promise a magazine. Source. I just say I write for a few things. I mumble. Then we meet up for an interview. I have met a great many people in London who know Nimrod. Like, yeah. just you know, he gets about. Yeah, you're just like, oh, you, someone's describing someone, and you're like, I think that sounds like Nimrod. And they're like, no. yeah, it is. So <laughs> I feel like that happens more Thanks. often than. He's not. a local celebrity. Thank you. I think so. Yeah. I mean, very very discreet one though. Yeah. My big goal is to get to the Met Gala. They mm. just announced the theme, <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. Yes. What are you going to wear? Diet Prada said they announced it, but it's so far away from the actual Met Gala, which is in May. Mm. And they I've said... Well, they've got a lot of time to plan now, I mm. suppose, don't well, what's they? What's the big deal, getting a they costume? Can, they can get thinky. and Because right. they always try and do like provocative, kind of slightly anti-capitalist messages, right? Yeah. Okay. Ant- Anna that... Wintour is anti-capitalist? Well, not Anna Wintour. Like but AOC. There was that one with AOC, which is like, eat the rich. Yeah. It's like... Tax, yeah, and taxation. Yeah. So it's the theme slogan. is Sleeping Beauty, and they said not the Disney version of Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, it's intellectualizing Sleeping <laughs> Not the Harvey Weinstein version of not, Sleeping not the Beauty, Weinstein. I hope, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do I understand of this title? I don't yeah. know. What do you get out and of And do you think it's lame to be... Um, to pay for a ticket to the Met Gala because you want to be invited. Well, you can pay. You can yeah. pay to get it yeah. to get inside. But presumably, a lot. People pay. That's um, like probably kind of rich New York hedges who are you know f- financing their next like uh, in- room. Instagram paid for four rooms. tickets and they sent f- like a few Instagram influencers like Lola Tash, <laughs> yeah. which I love. She does my therapy says it's a meme account, so she went on their behalf. But individuals can buy Met Gala tickets. It's pretty lame. I think so. Yeah. I think so, totally. I mean, these, but how much these, does it cost? These should be invites, no? But how much does it cost? It costs like one year membership of Soul House. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's not actually as much as I thought it I would be. I think it's yeah. a better investment. I would have thought it would have been honestly. on the deep tens of thousands. How much money like... you spend total in your life in Soul House, would you say? The drinks there are very expensive. Yeah. Stephen, do you they're have an amount? They're not expensive. Much? Expensive. They are. I don't think so. Well, think it depends what your money. reference point is. They're cheaper than going to, like, I don't know, yeah, somewhere in Mayfair. Yeah, they're cheaper than anywhere around my area. But I, I generally cheaper. go to Weatherspoons, <laughs> so it's quite yeah. expensive for me. Really? Back to the Met Gala. I think Anna Winter should quit already from Vogue. And Tavi Gavinson, if you know, she should be the editor of Vogue. She's, you know, she's a singer. I, you know, I, I was down, or I was listening to a Stephen Sondheim's Assassins. Maybe a year ago, and I saw that she was doing the vocals she, in yeah. like an off Broadway show, and I was like, "Yeah, very talented person." Yeah, she did Rookie like... Magazine, then she played herself kind of in Gossip Girl. Oh right, she should edit Vogue. I'm done with Anna Wintour. Oh, wow. I think people are yeah. in general, but she's holding on to power. Why? You know, my co- uh, this yeah. is a good okay. stat for it's you. A good question. Yeah. My cousins 
my like distant cousins, like second cousins, like own Condé Nast. Mm. But they always refused whenever I wrote them letters after college. Is that hoss? To you want to and and when I ask for them, a job. We can tag them in this. Um, or not. Think about who they'll. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we should. What you know, do you want from not. them? Though? I mean, she's yeah. on the board of Condé Nast. No, no, it was just oh. funny. I just wanted a job after college, like any normal college kid, and being like, hey, I'm like going to need be a bit here. of nepotism. And they yeah. didn't? Like, they didn't? Yeah. They just ignored me, like, repeatedly. Even after yeah. business school, I tried again. And uh, they still repeatedly. Yeah. Sometimes me. I email every single editor, and then at the end I get a message, you've been contacted by you've contacted all the editors, and none of them are keen on your stories. I, I carpet <laughs> bomb the magazine sometimes, just on board. On Monocle magazine, I tried to write for them, and they told me. Tyler Brulé. Yeah, he, he, he got that? fired from the but I think, no, no, but I think you got your revenge. I saw your YouTube uh, stand up, like, a sh- uh, you know, you, you mm-hmm. called it out somehow. You called out the Monocle yeah. team. Monocle, yeah, they won't hire straight people, basically. That's what you said. That's Is my that... issue. And they love the Swedish army. They love furniture, Japanese furniture in yes. Japanese lounges. Yes, and Japanese yeah. knives. Have you seen the shop on Chilton Street? Did they? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 is there their uh, investment? There's a Japanese knife. Yeah, it's connected to Monocle it's a bit. It's connected to Monocle. Uh, you, know, you don't read Monocle magazine? Yeah, no. you're looking at us. Do you know it? You don't know I know it. it. I, of yeah. course I know it. Like, I've, it's, it's been around like at hotels or something, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Where Tyler, else? Yeah. Tyler Bullet was not What's so was good moved, about it? Was fired from the FT. Not asking you, but just before my time. But yeah, yeah as I understand, or oh, he left the FT. Yeah. And, he had a column, and I understood he. He had a column which was a similar kind of concept, though. It was about like kind of traveling, businessy. And Jaran Ganesh replaced Tyler Bulle. Much, much more. You love Jaran. I, love, I Jaran. loved his mind. I he's quite that guy. He can be yeah. divisive. But that guy's cool. He's a yeah, citizen he's cool. of Norway. Huh? It's he, he's very smart. He I mean, wrote. He wrote a very, very, very clever piece uh, in the last week or two about like why young people should go into the office. Why? And I'm like a big like office advocate, like going yeah. in. I mean, just because of the it. spontaneity of like meeting people and it's stuff the first like that. Thing I read. And he was his main point was basically young people should go into the office for like a lesson in in <laughs> anthropology, huh. so you can see actually like how kind of inadequate some of your yeah. your colleagues are, and you can you know see and their yeah. foibles. And you, you know. ever met Janan in the office? I I haven't I've only yeah, met <laughs> that's him. That's why you twice. go to the office to meet Janan Ganesh. He doesn't he doesn't come in actually, <laughs> right. as he mentions in the column. Yeah. All right. Why is he so elitist? Well, he used to live in the U.S., oh. so I think he's only recently moved back to the U.K. Oh. He, he lives yeah. in Hackney. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he wrote a piece about and Hackney. And he wrote the other his day. piece about Hackney. Mm. Yeah. yeah, which yeah, made yeah. some very which, good points about Hackney. Yeah, too, by actually. the way. Yeah. And I'm, I, I was telling uh, Numrod that I saw him actually in a restaurant, and I'm such a fan. I went mm. to speak to him, mm. and uh, he's like, What are you doing in Notting Hill? Move to Hackney. Uh, he, you don't fit in here. I'm like, really? What do you know about me? <laughs> he's very much into, you know, he's very anti, I don't know, he likes the, the good part of the city, and the, uh, not good and creative, mm-hmm. I think. Mm. Defense Where of Hackney. was he hanging? His, his point about mm-hmm. Hackney was basically like, part of its success and I thought this was a really smart point part of its success is that it's like off the tube off so the consequently tube. it has to create all of its own amenities it has oh. to have its own yes. cinema or its own re- like every, it's a village kind it's of not within London right. it's actually yeah. disconnected huh. from London mm-hmm. it's a good point here. it's not Thanks disconnected from London like the overground goes there the right? overground like... goes there but the overground only like runs southeast but that's to not east. true you could just get on it uh, at the, at the... <laughs> okay don't analyse it too much <laughs> yeah there's there's, 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 there's the, what's the light blue one the They'll the blue one. Yeah. Uh, no, but you know, when Victoria. you follow his uh, comment, your chain of thought, mm. you accept it. Like, that's his <laughs> opinion. It's yeah. funny because he starts with the conversation and he ends. I'm like, okay, I see it. It's a point of view, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It, if, w- yeah. What, Stephen? Are you pro officers? No, I don't no, think no. it's It's interesting. Is it disconnected? I lived in Hackney for a right. while. Yeah. 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 yeah, the Victoria Park at Sunday Food Market. Yeah, back in but, the uh, well, what's the vibe? Don't you find the office a bit unhygienic? Drinking in the coffee. Well, I always the noticed kitchen. that you do fist bumps. Yeah, don't I, ne- you? I never touch buttons or coins. I, I have <laughs> yet. I have yet to to uh, give uh, yeah. Nimrod kisses. I don't do kisses. He doesn't. Usually. No. Interesting. Yeah. Well, do you touch all the FT elevator buttons? <laughs> <laughs> well, we only fist bumped, so yeah. Yeah, I don't. You do no. I I, I touch. Do you, yeah, I touch. Yeah, and right. I used to. I used to be the um, science reporter. I used to write about COVID for the All FT right. before before the rest. Yeah, I was reading that about wrong? you. I was yeah. reading that about you. You were following Any? COVID and the pandemic quite mm. statistically as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I mean, it was a statistical phenomenon, right? It's it was. How, a, it's and like and data. What is your passion right now? I mean, what do you follow? Because as I understood, you write about all kinds of like entertainment. I write about like hotels, restaurants, gambling companies, mm. cigarette companies. 
Um, it, weirdly, there is a bit of a crossover of writing about like the pandemic, which is a kind of public health phenomenon. Yeah. Because often with gambling and cigarettes, the way they're like interpreted by people is they are a bit of a health issue, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you wanted to ask Oliver if he got something wrong or something? Well, I was saying, what what is like the one thing that you you know if you like the there must be a piece that you're like embarrassed <laughs> about now from the pandemic, like based on whatever data was available at the time mm. that has since been like actively refuted. No, mm. I feel like there were many instances of things that I wrote or thought during the pandemic at various times that I'm like, oh God. I think the thing I found about the the cover of the pandemic <laughs> Sorry, is it, ob it obviously <laughs> became so polarized so quickly, right? In the sense of like people adopted different camps, like we either need to like unlock immediately or like restrict everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was at times very, very difficult to like pick through like what was scientific opinion and mm. then what was someone's own kind of ideological um, instincts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what I also found was it was people, there were very few people, and these were kind of the ones I respected most in terms of the scientific commentators, who managed to move from a position kind of early on of being like, we need restrictions, which we probably did, mm -hmm. to then being like, actually, we, we should loosen up restrictions and to get people's freedoms back. Can you go oh, online yeah. and edit your old articles and just like fix the... No. But Dominic Cummings did that on his blog. I think there's a few more like editorial oh. um, hurdles at the FT, hopefully. It's a good point, actually. Do you yeah. get covering a few points that you don't agree with sometimes? I mean, because like there's statistics, but like, you know, especially when it's scientific based, like you cannot refute it as a journalist. Mm -hmm. You just have to present the data as it is. But does it agree with your like personal, you know, opinion on what's going on? Mm -hmm. I would have trouble if I were covering that subject matter back then, because I'd, I had my own yeah. scientific Mm -hmm. analysis yeah. and the data that's coming out what was your point on the pandemic you miss, point it. You miss the... it right are you pro pandemic yeah. no. oh, i mean look I, I became an excellent chef during the pandemic so yeah, yeah. you got an e-bike no uh, i got an e-bike i sold my mm. e-bike really? you know my yeah. battery was stolen from my big e-bike yes. samira saw it um just yeah. oh, what recently in the, the battery last itself yesterday. the battery alone is 900 pounds jesus just now uh, near the worsley actually the second that's time crazy. I, I mean i love how cool better. you were like like i was happy because it was an, in a weekday so i could just roll it to the shop which is nearby to the bike yeah. store i would be so happy you have it insured though no I, I don't pay i hate paying insurance Damn. like yeah uh, even when i go to kenya for example i won't pay for travel insurance i just pay cash at the hospital huh. <laughs> well, that's cheap the hospital. you can negotiate right. yeah, yeah you can yeah. negotiate at the hospital why pay insurance yeah. you only pay the source yeah, just to loop it i just want to yeah. say boris johnson just yesterday had the, there was a headline i didn't read it mm -hmm. that he wasn't for the like the last like, lockdown oh right it, yeah yeah yeah, the, yeah, Boris. Apparently, yeah. or just to justify his party. Oh, I watched. Yeah. I read those texts. Did you? Did you? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yesterday. what's been coming out? I mean, it's crazy yeah. with the with the um the COVID inquiry because yeah. obviously yeah, COVID inquiry. Well, everyone's had there. access but to maybe the audience. I want to be in the audience. To justify his yeah. own shenanigans, you know, during yeah. the the period. Stephen, what are you working on right now? I'm very intrigued. Oh, I, I, I can't talk about it. NDA. Uh, he loves NDAs, by the way. If you walk with him, he signs. <laughs> he signs you immediately on an agreement. You can't tell anyone. It's fairly true. I mean, I'm I'm very happy with. Uh, some of the things we have coming out. Um, but why do so you I'm have signing people immediately as you meet them? They tell you a story, you sign them on a contract. <laughs> I don't know if it works that. That's uh, very American. I mean, yeah, it's very American. Maybe it is, but also, it's yeah, I think there's a there's a nice element of surprise mm -hmm. to you know, and letting uh, marketing machines you know do their work without. We can help you. Up. No, I get it. Uh, no, we definitely have like a fun. I'll say we have. A, an incredibly awesome bank robbery project coming out next year, but I won't say anything else about it. It's a where... documentary. Yeah, it's a yeah. documentary. You get but, Oliver uh, to wow. come to the bank to like... Uh, but but like anything bank the... robbery related, mm -hmm. send my way. Because like that, anywhere heist related stuff, like that is definitely like my personal interest yeah. and passion right, right now. Right now? Okay. Cool. Because it's light and it's fun and it's insane and the bank is monzo and and usually yeah <laughs> usually as long as no one's dying you know mm. we're, we're okay but sometimes you so know it's like an e-bank or a normal I, oh it's like a revolution it's, it's 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 not it's not revolution right. it's not monzo those are your only two hints no basically it's an old uh, it's an it's something that happened i mean before probably the online banking and all mm. of that i feel like monzo doesn't have a vault <laughs> That's kind of part of the nature of challenger banks. Well, they actually, probably don't have a vault. <laughs> There's no cash you want to say more about? Well, there is one thing that I can talk about too, which I think might be interesting too. But I know that this one is public. But yeah, you know, I know we're doing the missing crypto queen. So oh, so the missing crypto queen is the story about the lady <laughs> yeah. who stole lots of crypto. What was her name actually? Ruja Ignatova. You still in touch? 
Uh, she, she, close personal friend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the BBC podcast. So you're doing stuff yeah. about the BBC that? podcast. You're doing stuff. Yeah, we're doing, we're working on one uh, that has to do with that. That the, one's public. A different so crypto queen? out there. You no, it's another? on her. It's on her. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's a visual. It's a visual. You know, the podcast. The podcast was great, mm-hmm. but you know, you got to add a visual layer to uh, the BBC made the podcast. Story. The yeah. missing crypto queen. Yeah. And I mean, I tried to work with the guy, but then he said, uh, you know, go it's do so this. like J- Jamie. Jamie. J- J- Jamie, Bartlett. yes, yeah. Jamie Bartlett. Mm. Mm. People keep nice it right. Guy. Very yeah. nice guy. All yeah. those podcasters, they they people offer them to make movies based on the podcast, and they can't say yes. They never say yes. Yeah, they, was... they think someone better is going to come, but then it never gets made until Stephen comes. He was like, no, he was like, oh, go, just go do it yourself. You don't. Need, I don't have the rights to this story. They keep you saying just... you don't need me. Do it yourself. That's the thing they say. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. you support other initiatives. You have like a seed, uh, you know, produce production project. Um, we have a lot of things going on, um, mm. none of which I can probably talk about. No, no, you don't <laughs> have to. We can, we can, we can talk headlines and not details. Okay, headlines, not details. Um, okay, you can think about it. Yeah, yeah. I was let's talking let's about let's just let's in terms of intellectual interest. You will. He has a few He's things. He's like a lone can. wolf production. I'm like that's so cool. Oh, well, lone wolf is your. Lone well, it is. Wolf. Yeah, we, yeah. You are the wolf. Yeah, I expected to see like a, 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 a darker figure, mm-hmm. but actually you're very friendly. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, it's funny. She means your character, she yeah. would be like more, uh, yeah, like, more like the wolf. menacing. We have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, yeah. look at what he's interested we... in. Because <laughs> you love murder mysteries and you yeah, love... Yeah, um, exactly. Well, it's me. funny. What do you guys think about true crime in general? Like, is it, is it, is, you know, have we hit peak true crime? This mm-hmm. is something I'm always thinking about. Yeah. Is true crime... You know the scam genre. The you know we got past yeah. murders. Now we're in scams. Isn't that where's yeah. true crime going, Nimrod? That's my question to you. It's, it's going towards false crime. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Where you make up the story and it's not really happened. So no harm done. So no, <laughs> really. so no harm done. So I think the future of podcast is going to be like a pretend true story on a podcast, but then they tell you in the last episode it's a fake tale. Ooh. So it's a false crime. Ooh. Mm. So, so with That's actors, right. like actors in the studio, yeah. just like, you mm. know, mockumentary, kind of... mockumentary podcast, I think, because there's not enough stories to That's tell. A That's a good idea. That's a good idea, Nimrod. Another thing, Marina Abramovic, uh, the performance mm. artist, she's yes. doing an opera now. Yeah. You oh, fans... I actually just heard about it. Maria going... Carlos Opera. Yeah. One of my... Yeah. I, did, I thought she's a performance artist, but she's doing an opera. Her it's a little weird. Mm. It's a performance. I was listening to a podcast actually of hers. You know, we know her, we know her. But when you listen to her, her biggest uh, initiative and passion is to feel her body surrounded by others. This is when her art com- comes mm-hmm. alive. I'm yeah. like, hey, we can all do that. And I have a friend, we can tap yeah. into this. But that's her thing, isn't it? It's like isn't performance it? art. Yeah, right? like, yeah. yeah. That's I have what a friend, Sam what Harris, who's obsessed with me going to the opera and yeah. paying yes. full ticket. And I'm like, I'm not going to go if I can't hang out with Marina Abramovic backstage. Yeah. I want to be invited by her and hang out. I don't really... Opera, you can get infected with it's like the flu season. <laughs> I'm not going to spend three hours if and I cannot I meet Marina backstage. I want to meet Marina backstage. You'd be happy and to get infected you? by Marina. I want to be, yeah, be infected by her personally. <laughs> I want to be friends. I don't want to just see an opera if I'm not on the list. Yeah. But I mean, fair. are you are you back? Uh, are you going backstage? I, uh, that's why I'm saying it now. So. Oh, I went. Oh. Putting out there. Putting, the putting it out there. I, think I went okay. to the opening recently of her exhibition R-A, at the yeah. RA oh, or something. Right, like yeah, that. that's yeah, RA, yeah. and she's best friends with Pussy Riot, Nadia from Pussy Riot, mm. who refused like to be on the podcast. Mm. Yeah. Nadia refused to yeah. come. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Nadia Pardon. from Pussy Riot refused to come on the podcast. She's best friends with Marina now. Yes, I saw on Instagram. Yeah. Tonight on Piccadilly Circus, there's a big video of Nadia. She's everywhere. It is that artist that uh, actually does, uh, you know, once a week or once a mm. month. What's his name? Piccadilly Circus. Yes, yeah, right. and he takes one screen and uh, do an art performance. Yeah. So Nadia's on it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. If you're ever oh. in Piccadilly mm-hmm. Circus, I love Piccadilly Circus, yeah. actually. It's I just go for the Whole Foods. I never stand in the actual circus. Jay Rayner reviewed the Masala Zone I, recently. I, I, I go when I am on yeah. My, yeah. my way to Dover Street Market, actually, mm. which has an interesting also, uh, comment dire, uh, yesterday, mm. an opening of uh, mm-hmm. the stylist of Harry Styles. Yeah, Harry Styles and Zara. is a stylist now. Yeah. And Zara, like, you know, Zara and uh, Dover oh, really? Street Market. Collaboration. Like, a collaboration. Do you never exactly. go, Oliver, to Dover Street Market? Do you go? Not really that much. The no. only yeah. relevant store... In London, it is. is. I think so. There's I cheap stuff so. in the basement for men. <laughs> yeah. like really I just buy all my clothes on eBay. <laughs> it's so oh. funny. Like yeah. uh, what kind of? Like kind of vintage. <laughs> Can you give us a specific? Yeah, but that's uh, yeah. five. What? This sweater vintage is running shorts is from the 70s. For, the running shorts yeah. make an exception. Yeah. 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 
So it's you're going now brightly to... Brightly colored <laughs> you're, you're on your way to the airport to do a marathon. I'm going to run the Athens Marathon, yeah. In Marathon? Not in Athens. Okay. From Marathon to Athens. So Marathon is a town, a village. You're going to... start there and run back to Athens exactly in the mountains so okay. uh, it's it is quite a it's it's one where people don't often get their personal best mm-hmm. marathon time because I think a, most of the way is up is uphill oh. basically like, but a very slight uphill like but obviously over over hours and hours of running you know yeah. that's, that's you're doing right. it for social media content or GoPro Of course, I'm doing it for the Instagram post at the end. Like, I when, made it, like, you, <laughs> hashtag you marathon complete. Wait, but you are, because you've done this many times before, right? These, yeah, <laughs> of course. Come on, it's the only thing that drives me. No, I do, I literally do it for, like, I don't know really what, I actually what got into, I really, I really got into running in terms of, like, um, longer, longer distances mm-hmm. during the pandemic. Was, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of Have people. Have you ever did. ran a marathon or? I am um, actually, I love sports. Mm-hmm. I do all kinds of sports. Yeah. I hate marathon. Yeah. I mean, okay for you. Mm-hmm. I hate anything that's endurance. I like mm-hmm. sports. <laughs> have you done marathon no, no there's no. this thing that comes up in my Instagram feed it's probably to like mm-hmm. massage my own ego where it's kind of like only one percent of people have completed a marathon mm. oh, right. makes me kind of fuzzy. oh wow you're like really elitist on us now <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't take the bus if I was you to the small village because it's dangerous the Greek um, bus uh, I just it's saw Greek. this movie Beckett where they have him and Alicia Vikander and this guy oh and um, they have Denzel car. Washington so oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, they crashed their car in the mountains Maybe it's just a different mountain region. Uh, yeah. I just would just take an Uber How, for you. Well, I'm not going to run, though. I mean, yeah, I would just yeah. avoid the bus. Like, yeah, okay. I don't do buses. I can't deal. Duly noted. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Oh, yeah, we were yeah. talking with Hannah yesterday. Like, you don't you don't take the yeah, tube. No. I, am, I, I, no, take, I take certain lines on the tube. Yeah, I take certain lines, not all the lines. Only Elizabeth What? line and circle lines. Do you take the Ventilated. I mean, the ventilated. The, the overground kind of. I'm yeah, a northern line person. I don't do deep tube. I don't. Uh, yeah. Deep tube. You don't, <laughs> go un- you don't go real it, underground. I don't, the, it's too hot. The temperature on the central line is 50 degrees. Actually, yeah, central line is the worst. It's, it's also bad. the air pollution oh. down there is absolutely no, terrible. Yeah. Like. yeah. No ventilation. Yeah. Oof. I was going to say, yeah. So Too Netflix have a short film now called The After. And okay. it's the only short film people ever watched on Netflix. No, The White Helmets. What was that? Was that hot? That was hot. It was a hot yeah. doc. Yeah. yeah. It was a few years ago. No? Probably The After. Yeah. yeah. It's like what's, what's The After about? It's a guy. It's kind of a. Tiny terror attack in London. This guy's wife is, is killed and then he is, he's becomes an Uber driver and he's sad the whole movie. <laughs> But what uh, happened at the end? My friend Mason Harman did it. Um, yeah, uh, at the end he just takes people on an Uber and then uh, he, all of his family died and then he meets um, this other family. The actress was going to also be on this podcast uh, next week, maybe Ellen. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the girl on the Uber passenger, she kind of hugs him and then it ends. It sounds like a student film, but it's happening. It's really um, cool. a thing. The, mm. the after. The after. Yeah. We'll check it out. Uh-uh. How do you create what you watch? Yeah. How do I curate, curate. what I watch? I, I, I'm, I, I, I would I, say I, I'm usually I, a last. Choose. But today <laughs> like, you want to... people I like have told me to watch something. Yeah. I'll then consider watching it. Like Nathan Fielder's <laughs> new show, The Curse. Well, you told me to watch it. That was one. And then my friend Iyad... told me to watch it and then I probably I probably will watch it just based on the two of those plus one I found him a link so. Nathan Fielder is a prankster I had a show Nathan for you mm. do you know this show guys oh, oh my cool. god you need yeah. to know it it's, no, it's, I don't. it's very American but very funny he like helps small Canadian, businesses I guess. he pretends to help small businesses in the original show Nathan mm. for you so here's the premise he, he, he goes into a small business like a legitimate small business and then comes up with a wacky insane idea give an example of one of them Nimrod like, uh, the, the, he goes to There's something about warts um, where he goes to a thing and he tells them, um, why would you upgrade it? Or he goes to a basketball arena. I can't remember. And then he's like... They're struggling small businesses. Struggling. They're and struggling like, small hey, businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And I, okay, like, here's one, you know, it was, there's one, maybe some coffee shop, right? Yeah. And he's like, we'll call it, like, Star Buds or something instead of mm. Starbucks. Like, yeah, yeah. and then we'll just brand it the same as Star, yeah. right? And he ruins the business. And then he ruins the business. Well. Yeah. Yes, okay. yeah, Now there's yeah. a new drama with Emma Stone. Both of them are like this couple who try to um, get uh, insulated houses in a deprived area of LA, Espanola. Mm-hmm. But they actually want to raise the money of the whole neighborhood by buying... You just buying posted it. Oh, you just, yeah, I just saw it on your story. It. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's called The Curse. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be... So pretty. it's entertaining. Aren't the Safdies it's... involved with it? Mm, sure. There's some yeah, Safdie yeah. involvement, I think. Yeah. So is it entertainment, basically? It's just entertainment. Entertainment. It looks like a mockumentary, but it's a thriller. Right. And a uh, mockumentary is where you have actors pretending to do a documentary. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, uh, yeah. In, in this case, he, he gives $100 to a girl in the parking lot and she curses him. 
I feel like Nimrod is like kind of built for a mockumentary. I think he's about yeah. to make one. Yeah, it's like you're living your, your a mockumentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in it right now. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, it is. It is something that uh, there, he's got. You've got something. an element of performance artist about you, though. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, totally. That's some, why he likes to meet yeah. Marina. I did some Vice magazine films before they went bankrupt. <laughs> uh, yeah, where I get into events and I explain how I got in. I think I was That's telling cool. him. I think he, he can also be a stand-up comedian. He has a very like dry sense of humor. Stand down. From Except stand he's down. All his, stand up, he tells the down. same joke stand, that, stand alone I stand alone <laughs> stand alone comedian, no. <laughs> you, you, I've seen Nimrod do stand up he, stand up or, is difficult what do you say don't we say stand up comedian no, they're yeah just, they're just uh, messing yeah, that's, yeah. don't right. do that because yeah. like my French and my English get mixed up sometimes mm. Mm. are you French you're a native French speaker I am nat- I am actually native French speaker but I'm Lebanese born oh, and, cool. and I'm a French citizen yeah 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 wow. and I'm an English comment dire, a Londoner Mm-hmm. And a nomad like Nimrod. Nomad. Okay, so actually, the person Nimrod <laughs> yes. told me to come prepared with like uh, a person whose books, and I feel like you should know this guy's books. Lebanese, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Do you know him? By name, of course. Nassim Nicholas Taleb, uh, Black Swan. Yeah. He's a writer. Yeah, Black Swan. Yeah, yeah Black of Swan. course. Is he like, happening right now? Like he would be the one writer that I. You said to come prepared with like a writer who I love, and for me, it is absolutely him. Have you ever met him? I've never met him, but we would love make to it meet happen. him. Doesn't he oh, live in Paris? Yeah. Where does he live? He lives in New York. He, he lives, lives in, in New Westchester, York. New York, somewhere. Ah, so he rides his bike around. You're, is you're he a real small fan. enough? Is he small enough to see my DMs? No, he's big. He loves to lift weights. He's like a he's like a weightlifter. How old is he? He's not young. 63, maybe 60-ish. Oh, okay. Maybe I, I don't okay. want to date him, but yeah, he's. Uh... There was another person you wanted to do a shout out. <laughs> you wanted the movie, uh, the uh, music rights. Or... Oh yeah, no, uh, no, don't worry okay, about don't it. Mention. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oliver, anyone culturally relevant you'd like us to follow? Uh, oh, who I do I find entertaining? Today. I do you know what the, the the Twitter account that I love at the moment is that is I think his name's Derek Guy. He's the um the like menswear expert who just yeah. critiques everyone like wow. he critiques politicians. In, yeah, he ripped into Rishi Sunak, but he's just he's just generally like got a really brilliant wit. Um, <coughs> yeah, well, he did all the politicians. Yeah, and he called out all the U.S. presidential candidates. Yeah, <laughs> and he'll like look at worst. suits yeah. and be like, actually, that's quite an ill-fitting suit for X, Y, Z reasons. And you're like, yeah, he does make a lot of sense. <laughs> you have somebody in the FT actually, Robert. What's his name? Robert uh, Ed, uh, that writes about men uh, clothing. Yeah, at uh, the Robert weekend. Something. I oh, about oh. no? No, not, Ro- Shimley. not Shimley. I know Rob Armstrong. Armstrong. Okay. Yeah, and I yeah. actually also like his writing. I am an FT fan, apparently. Does I he come to the office? Special. Does he come? Robert Armstrong is based in New York, but I think he he you know his his kind of bailiwick is really finance, but he just also has opinions about mm-hmm. menswear and he, yeah, he, he likes has to an, offer them yeah. in the pages. Every now and then. What's your guy again? The guy you mentioned earlier. What uh, the critic? Uh, the Derek, Derek, Derek Guy. Guy. Derek Guy. Okay, okay, yeah, not yeah. Derek Glassberg. No. Glassberg yeah. is my friend of me, yeah. He's another yeah. fashion another guy. Another Derek. Yeah. <laughs> you guys yeah. are friends? Yeah. I mean, beyond the work. We like, f- uh, frenemies with frenemies. benefits. <laughs> frenemies with benefits. <laughs> Nimrod? <laughs> uh, I consider Nimrod a friend on a personal and professional level. He bought me a bagel. We go to eat bagels. <laughs> Which, in... wait, what's, where, where is the best bagel in London? I, I heard in Primrose Hill there's less well, bagels. It's that's, not the Brick Lane one. That's my Yeah. Panzer is the most expensive grocery store. Yep. They have bagels. And St. John's Wood. Panzer's yeah, bagel is half the price of an It's Bagel. Is it? And how about Let's Bagel? Is it good? I haven't tasted it. It's Bagel's great and it's local to me. But They uh, run out of bagels. Where at are you based? Well, there's, I'm in Primrose Hill. Yeah. He lives next to Aziz Ansari in Primrose Hill. <laughs> I saw him every yeah. A lot of the week. media types live in, in yeah. Primrose Hill. Lena Dunham as well around there. Aziz Ansari got cancelled, so he moved to Prim- Primrose. Hmm. And he's Actually, going to the farmer's market with you every I, I feel like I saw him like eight weeks in a row during the pandemic at the farmer's market. And yeah. like we were always just at the same stand and I always wanted to talk to him. But have, it never have happened. Have you spoken to him yet? Yeah, oh, I actually did try to speak to him at the 2017 Emmys, and he ignored me. Um, so yeah. I kind of didn't get over to that. I tried to pitch to my neighbor, Sean Horgan. Mm. She's a cool uh, TV maker, and she made the Apple TV show Bad Sisters. She lives next to me. And I, in Halloween, all the kids went to her house, so I got in as well. <laughs> with, like, a, with a idea. mask on, so she thought <laughs> yeah. you were a child. And I started because pitching her. Yeah. I started yeah. pitching her an idea for a show. And like, yeah. <laughs> this is a very precocious did child. Did it work? She never work? answers me on Instagram, even though I'm your neighbor. You have to answer my Instagram. Um, yeah. DMs. Yeah. yeah but I suppose you could literally just walk around to our house I and mean, go like, dog, dog, dog. I would think you were a crazy neighbor. <laughs> if my neighbor ever wrote to me and was yeah. like, oh, I'm my, your neighbor, I'd be like, that would scare me. And I keep thinking one day I'll do a show with her and then we'll go on a Stephen Colbert interview and she would laugh about it, mm. how he, I, he came to my we house. Met, we I met through my neighbor. Yeah. So, so my, my neighbor is oh. a longtime collaborator. Aidan Prowse. He uh, was the kid yeah, in the Secret Garden. Oh. Yeah. Well, he lives like a few doors down, yeah. 
And we so went you hang out with Hayden. It's your boy. So, yeah, I know Hayden well. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Hayden, oh. yeah, yeah, we oh. can bring him on the pod. You guys are neighbors? No, Hayden and I are neighbors, and Nimrod and Hayden a long mm. time collaborators. I used to yeah. be an ex neighbor, actually, of From Rose Hill when Rose. I was a student at SOAS. I used to be in Bethesda Park Gardens at the, oh, nice. yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. last end. Mm -hmm. so yeah, next yeah. To from Rose Hill. And you it negotiated your rent down during. COVID in Primrose. That's why he's still there. <laughs> um, Unless you don't want to. I, Shout out to Stephen's landlord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a lovely guy. Um, <laughs> no, we're friends now. We're friends. It's, that yeah. was like five years ago. Yeah. No, I think I, I think I was able to get like a good <laughs> price during the dark depths of COVID. Yeah. Just like anyone yeah. who but they didn't was up willing up. to but rent. Did you lock play. him into yeah. that now? It, it didn't, I didn't lock him in, yeah. but let's just say like... He likes you. He likes me. I'm mm. freaking cool. I'm easy. I don't have parties. I yeah. am helpful. I'm a good... You don't have loud music? I don't have loud music. Oh, I'm a nice good music. dude. Mm. And uh, I'm... But you're on Zoom all the time. All and day. I have two you cats. Zoom. And we're like chill. And we just do our thing. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. But you're always talking on Zoom. And you have Zoom meetings all day. No one can really hear me if I'm on Zoom, though. Okay. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, yeah. The key with... If you're a landlord is to meet your tenant. And not hide behind a management company. Mm. And then they actually love you, and then they would pay you more. Yeah, yeah really actually, noticed. you have to have a good relationship with the, yeah, with sure. the landlord, no? Pretend to fix things if nothing is wrong. It's, it's crazy, though, the, the state of the rental market at the moment. My, my friend moved abroad, like, mm -hmm. six months ago. She rented a place in southeast London. She put it on the market one morning. By apparently 12, they'd already had, like, 15 requests for oh, viewing. Wow. Mm -hmm. When was that? This was like a, six a months month ago. ago. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, but it's, this, it's yeah. still running as hot as ever. Yeah. And, and then the next day... She'd have like seven offers, and the offers now come with like Six months CVs, All right. where they're like, "I, you know, these are my passions, and yeah. I never party, and like, and it's it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. It's impossible to I rent." Think you, you should do it yourself. Don't pay a company to go over the CVs because it's fun to do it yourself if you're a landlord. <laughs> yeah, but it does mean if the boiler breaks. Wait, do, you have, yeah. do you have tenants? Tenants of the trees, which is no. a great club in LA. Do you, no, have, tenants, do, you, do you have anyone who lives with you that is not your wife? or uh, no? Not yet, but Oliver, if you want to come back. Would you ever be your house, actually? I think if, it's if, if it comes to that, yeah, we might. Airbnb, I would have the biggest you know. party at your house if I ever be your house. You know, I was, I was a bad neighbor once mm -hmm. because I had that these students who were like partying till 4 or 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. By 4 a.m., I started threatening them with the, with the police. I think that's really fair. How did you threaten them? Like, no, I was sending messages. Come on, girls. I can't sleep da, yeah. da, and they said that Sunday tomorrow I'm like you're not allowed to spoil my Sunday it became a bit rude actually yeah. by 5am municipality was here it's rare to have I'm a 5am like, London hello yeah. <laughs> help and another they, uh, uh, relevant sorry go on it's, no, it's no, hard no. it's hard to it's, it's rare to have a London party that late yeah um, I don't know they were Austrian I don't think they got the, yeah. the local rules Austrian Austrian yeah, yeah, you don't no have any Austrian yeah, parties yeah, yeah. here in London what's your thing <laughs> yeah. uh, that's interesting lots of strudel yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my friend Ben Giladi is a producer and he made a movie about incels called yes. Menodrome coming mm. up soon where Jesse Eisenberg plays mm. an Uber driver who's like frustrated by not getting paid yeah and then Adrian Brody seduces okay. him to a men's only community and they're incels oh, together incels and they tell all of them to dump their girlfriends. But they're like an in-person. Wait, but I isn't an incel? Yeah. 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 An incel is someone who's involuntary celibate. So if they have girlfriends, are their girlfriends so not... They're voluntary servicing? celibate. They're voluntary. They're in... Vol -cell. Incel. Vol -cell. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah. why, why are you intrigued like with twist. the Uber driver stories? Uh, it's, a, it, it's current. Yeah, it's current. And it's nobody's ever made a movie about how lo, all those Elon Musk fans, the incels, how they live in mm. the community of mm. a one man telling them to just hang out with men who are straight like them, mm. but they're anti-women, maybe voluntary, some of them. <laughs> right and, about that. Yeah. What about incels? Why, why not? Yeah, what's your It would be this? a bit of a diversion from what I'm currently There must yeah, be a positive I'm, report I'm a that's related I'm with uh, gambling. Incels is a business. Cigarettes. People are... Be Gambling, I suppose most most incels are tend to be young men. But they pay and subscriptions. Most gambling addicts also like tend Jordan to be young Peterson. Men. Jordan Peterson makes money off incels. It's yeah. a business. Yeah. The business of incels, because if you're a star in those communities, you get uh, subscribers. Yeah, probably. I'm not aware to all of this. Like Jones. Yeah. Good. It's probably best uh, yeah, to stay unaware. Way, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it sounds a bit, you know, cultish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There's another cool actress, Talia Ryder. She's in a movie, The Sweet East, which I'm trying to hang out with everyone in this movie. Why? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it a British movie, The Sweet uh, East? It's an American in uh -huh. the East Coast. There's East a guy Coast, called... Yeah. The Sweet East, of course. There's a London guy who does a thing called Deeper Into Movies. You heard of him? 
It's like a movie club. But it's cool he never story? invites me to his screenings what? deeper into movies. Yeah, that sounds interesting. What does that mean? What, do they talk about it afterwards? He interviews yeah. filmmakers he loves from the US, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then they watch the film. Yeah, basically. I, so I, I never want to watch the movie. I want to come after the movie to the mm-hmm. Q&A. He won't let you do that. Yeah, and I want to come in the middle. I don't want to watch and like, I hate like watching stuff for three hours. Because they I just hate watching stuff too. Yeah. Oh, they that just solved the no um, one, the Hollywood no. actor strike, didn't they? Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's, it's. I want to hang out with the writers. Tentative deal has yeah. been struck. I mean, go <laughs> go during the you know the festivals and hang yeah. out with the writers there or Definitely. through the movie. No, the movie yeah. circles. You have to no. Yeah. What? I mean, like, uh, what do you attend? Like after a fashion show, you want to go backstage to hang no, out. No, but the any movie designers. premiere. Oh. Movie premiere too. You want to hang back. Or the the British film festival. I mean. I, don't want to the see London, the I was at the London, London Film yeah. Festival, and I it was. Think it's very but good. it was because it was still the actor strike yeah. at the time. No, there was no. Um, it was just directors there. There were no. Um, yeah, no Scorsese was here. Yeah. Did you Scorsese go to any here. one of the movies? I did. I saw Poor Things. Rami's. Uh, well, Rami's in that. What is it? Yeah, Rami's a uh, good Rami supporting Yusuf. role. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's uh, he was really good in that movie. Hmm. Did you see The Killer? Killers oh. of the Flower Moon. No, well, not uh, no, the, the killer. The killer, actually. The killer. It's just the I, killer. I think Tuneet like gave a, me yeah. tickets to it's both of those noir. movies that I couldn't go to yeah. either of them in the end. We have but. a friend called Puneet who commissions shows for Amazon. Mm. <laughs> Many Amazon shows have failed, but he's trying, and we keep pitching him as well as a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our mm-hmm. ideas for shows. Mm. <laughs> he's Watch another one of those people one. who... Yeah. Did he... He's oh, yeah, we, we realized afterwards yeah. that we both knew Nimrod. We, like, he was one of my very, very good friends from business school. And then when I got to London, he was like mentioned Nimrod and I was yeah. like Nimrod and yeah <laughs> first I mean yeah. it always happens that way yeah would you, do, you would you ever do a feature film uh, I would love to be in the feature film business I think as an actor or as a director as a, as a, as a <laughs> director <laughs> it... producer actor whatever you want <laughs> yeah. me to be really um, but you were looking for books to make no, dramas no because I heard you write actor mostly. also under your biography <laughs> yeah. I don't know like she read asking. your whole wiki oh, right, yeah good. I did I did no, I, I've I only generally you. helped friends out um, with projects. You oh, know? you were in the Golda Meir Israeli Prime Minister fiction yes. movie. I don't yeah. think I made the final cut. Okay, but you were there as a you helped. But them, you were like right? a supporting actor, yes, yeah. like an extra. Is, is, like an, is that an <laughs> Netflix movie? A good movie. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> not sure. It's a drama. It's a drama. Thing. Yeah, yeah. About the only Israeli female Prime Minister. Yeah, I know. Golda. I know. Which, which this movie fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about bad timing. The movie came out on October sixth. Yeah, we're not talking about the. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We're not talking about that. Sorry. 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 No politics. No, I mean not. Sorry. 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 That was just time. That was movie. That was movie and. Yeah, movie. Yeah. Actually, I did see it. We can't talk. Oh yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't see it yet, but I did see the advertisement it. for it and then it disappeared Helen Mirren yeah yeah they disappeared yeah it yeah. disappeared so do you guys read the uh, evening Star <laughs> magazine the ES magazine I did I did see the Devon Ross yesterday actually I yes, read the new it. cover story about Devon Ross she's a cool actress you yes know. I actually wait voila she was in an HBO show called Irma Vep oh you love this show it's a movie to watch a it. remake yeah. of an old French uh, dra- yeah. uh, like vampire making off Irma Vep and she's now in the ES, ES magazine are trying to be relevant um, even yeah. though they don't pay for a month, if you write for them, I wouldn't buy month. it. I feel like that's I quite a short period of time for freelancers. Isn't mm. it? Like, there's often freelancers True. who go months and months without like their invoice. I being think he's doing a good job. But the editor. I think uh, they ben. should pay you in advance. But, yeah, yeah. is the editor yeah. Jody Gregg? Or? No, Ben. Yeah. Ben something. What's his name? I do know Jasper Gregg, by the way. His son Jody used to be the editor. Of um, he's now. I thought he was now something. with them, like independent now or yeah. something like that. So yeah, uh, so. Uh, so what do you like about her? Isabel von Dijk wrote the ES magazine story about um, Devon, Devon Ross. Ross. I met Devon in in the Serpentine summer party. Yes. Um, She's a sweet young girl. Yeah, I want to to hang out. She used to date yeah. Earl Cave. Earl yes. Cave? Earl Cave. Earl Cave. Yeah. Who is the, the son, son of Nick Cave? Yeah. Yeah. You miss Nick Cave? What's your take? Nick Cave is in yeah. Chateau Marmont at the moment. Is Sick. It? Right now? Yeah, I mean, two days ago. Like, is he saying that? People who are well, sick. No, no, no. Nick Cave is currently no, 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 convalescing. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, but this, uh, this, this is all conditions. I don't know anything. He's in a coma? No, 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 no. He was a bit sick. He's on a tour. He, I mean, I saw just, him. Do you mean flu or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, come on, guys. People moved to the Chateau Marmont when they renovated the house or something bad happened. No, no, no. He was just sick and for two days and his wife was posting. What I want to say is that, and this, Devin Rose, okay, first two things. I followed the Red Hand Files 
on Instagram, mm-hmm. which is basically Nick Cave correspondence with his fan base. Mm. And he is adorable. If you're a fan of his music. Mm. I, I don't. Fo- I, this seems like an extreme level. Like, no matter how much I like you? someone, I wouldn't follow them on Instagram. Why are you oh, anti wow. Nick Cave? Why are you anti Nick No, I'm not. I just like someone's music, I, but I would never think to follow a musician he, on Instagram. But his son is the only relevant person right now. This Earl is, Cave. This Earl. is British aristocracy. <laughs> we have yeah. to. I mean, in terms mm-hmm. of music aristocracy. Yeah. He's really a good. Um, what do yeah. you think? Am I am I defending someone who's like old? No, he's still. Uh, I'm he's only still very to his relevant. Son. His son is in the other movie with Talia Ryder. Mm. Yeah, Sweet East. Yeah. And Devin Ross actually was with this uh, art movie uh, that mm. I saw in Ladbroke Hall with the son mm. of Bella Freud. Yeah. And she's an actor in that movie. Everyone's the son or daughter. No, I, 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 there's <laughs> there's nepotism. a lot of nepotism yeah, in the yeah, entertainment Bella. industry. And she defends oh, yeah. herself yeah. in that ES article yesterday. Yeah. And she's like, uh, no, no, no. You know, I didn't. I wasn't served. She is the daughter of the guitarist of Lenny Kravitz. Right. Yeah. With a with a famous model of like few years back. Oh yeah. So, but I mean, she is served, you know, a platform. She's cool. She left London, I think. Is... She's not. Yeah, it's name dropping. Don't we cram? I am name dropping. Really hard here, I mean, right? I am <laughs> name dropping, but at the same time, this is it's yeah. cultural relevance. Mm-hmm. It is everything we're watching. Don't name drop. You don't need to name, name drop. flopping. Name dropping. Name well, dropping is name What do you think? Am I name dropping? No, no, it's fine. I think it's it's name dropping to one man is just telling interesting stories to another. Stephen, <laughs> Stephen, what interests you? So we nothing. We make <laughs> Bagels. No, um, I tell you. I tell you. <laughs> or, or you like what, Nimrod? What any me. any juicy story yeah. that is like very um, intriguing. Yeah. What's the bar that you like to go to most? Uh, you know, what's in London? Ooh, that's an interesting. On a day, As someone who covers the the yeah. hospitality industry, I'd be interested. Interesting. Oh, you cover hospitality business. Yeah. No, business. Yeah, you know, like I don't even go to bars that much. I mean, I go yeah. to the Groucho Club sometimes. Yeah. That's about it. He's looking for interesting, intriguing business stories of like um, hoteliers or. Um, there, I'm sure you have some crazy stories. Stories. Like, I'm sure you have crazier stories than I do. I just tell, like, when people tell me a crazy story, then I just think, oh, can I retell this story as a doc in a better way or, like, yeah. in a more visual Repackage way it. that's thrilling and entertaining with a multi act structure and, and, an NDA. <laughs> and a lot of NDAs and a lot of, you know, and, and yeah. try to bring that story to bigger audiences than it has already yeah. achieved, possibly. But totally. you look for it for the intrigue. Well, no, I think I, what I always look for is like complexity, right? Like mm. a simple story for me. And a twist. A twist, a twist in the middle. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Right? I, I had an article that I wrote when I was at the BBC, and I, I don't think they ever ended up. Okay. Maybe they did sell it as a film, but it, they got that was approached by. Um, What's the title? Uh, it was about a Bolivian orchestra that got trapped in a German castle at the beginning of the pandemic, and oh. basically, I wrote this kind of long read about it. And in it, I mentioned a few facts, which was like they would make jokes about how, um, you know, they'd hear the piano tinkling in the room next door and they'd think it was Frederick the Great because he lived in this castle. And then I also wrote about how there was like a pack of wolves in the surrounding forest. And the New York Post took my article and turned it into really? Bolivian Orchestra trapped, Bolivian Orchestra trapped yeah. in German Castle surrounded yeah. by wolves or something like that. Haunted German Castle surrounded by wolves. And then they I got... They credited approach... you at least, the New York Post? Of course, yeah. They credited the BBC they article. But then, and then it's a consequence that like, lots of people in... The U.S. and uh-huh. see, I got approached by a few a few people to I, I don't know it never it never came to anything. One of them was the lady behind that film about the uh, the, the the stripper. Mm-hmm. Do you remember um, Janixa? Uh, Janixa Bravo. Yeah, yeah. I don't know her actually. Yeah. 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 She did Zola. She's one of your friends. Yeah, she's she? my yeah. would-be friend Janixa. Yeah. 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 She so to, she wanted at one Brett. point she wanted yeah. to make this into a. Brett Gelman, her ex, uh, is a good friend. Anyway, so what? So they got trapped in the thing and then physically trapped. The door was open, but well, no, they got like, trapped by. Covid restrictions, right. and then they had like they made love. What happened? They made music. They were a living orchestra. They, they were like kept lots of playing. pan pipes and stuff oh, right. like that. They kept playing and they that did too. not stop. Hmm. And then they got out. They got out eventually. Yeah. You, yeah. You, when when did you want to go there to meet them or you couldn't? I'm still. In, I mean, I'm, at the time I could. At the time so I couldn't travel, right. but I'm still kind of vaguely in touch with one or two of them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you can fictionalize it or do a doc, yeah. Fiction. No, the guy who's the main guy. <laughs> you can make up some fictionalized version of it. But I think, I think at the time, the reason they were interested in it, and it's interesting because a lot, I suppose, uh, journalism leads to a lot of inspiration for films a lot of the time, doesn't I it? I would say mean, that's a fair assessment. A fair. That like, if you to know about a story, someone yeah. had to have reported yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Generally. And maybe uh, AI can lead to that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think at the time though, there was a real search for single location films because they were like, are we ever going to be able to film in a, like like that? Look. That's fair. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes White, a lot White of Lotus sense. came out as a 
pandemic. Did they TV film show. it during the pandemic? Yeah, yeah because yeah. it's the one location, the White Lotus season one. Oh, no, I've heard of crazy stories even of movies that were shot during the pandemic that have like never seen the light of yeah. day, never will see the light of day. Yeah. There's to, probably, to there, to I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, wild it? locations, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the things people had to do to even get a movie yeah. off the ground at that point was probably and The only insane. reason to be a journalist is for one day have your story made into a movie because <laughs> why else are you a journalist? You're not going to get paid much. It's, about, remember. it's about the truth. Wow. Yeah. What's who's your gonna, aim? What's your aim? Who's going to remember me if none of my stories are becoming movies? We tried to make one of Nimrod. We tried to make Nimrod into a TV series. Happy. We pitched it like years me ago. Me, myself. Have a project. But yeah. 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 I'll yeah. pitch you some new interview magazine. Nobody ever made interview magazine movie based on interview. Andy but War I think Andy you, you should biopic? keep pushing, keep, keep pushing your thing, your castle. Oh, my cross. I haven't been pushing it. I was just approached, and I was, I just did it to hear out these calls, and I'd have calls with these people from CAA, be like, Oliver, we absolutely love your idea, <laughs> and we love your vibe, and I'm just there, like, I'm so dreary <laughs> here in London, like locked down during the pandemic. Always CAA. It's real ego. Boost. Why is it always CAA, and they always do it? Was the CAA thing, and yeah. what was what, WME? Yeah, uh, you have many interaction with CAA. The yeah, they're great. They're, your great. they're great. You can't yeah. say anything against they're, them. They're, they're like great. They're excellent. Aren't they? Well, they always excited. <laughs> they are amazing. They, 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 that's their job. They're hype people. That's what? their job. They're doing but their you, job. Why, why do you like living in London, actually, yeah. as an American? Oh, uh, uh, well, I'm a New Yorker, so I like that London York. is like New York light. You don't like want to be closer to CAA? It no, is. No. It is, isn't it? You don't want to be closer to CAA? No. Uh, <laughs> no. There's an office in Hammersmith. No, I mean, is it professional? Is it personal? Why do I live in London? Yeah, I well, Yes, I like the culture here. I like uh, I like that I, there, there's a relax a relaxation here that mm. I that for me compared mm. to, only compared to New York, right? Mm. Yeah, it's I have Hampstead Heath, I have Regent's but Park. I have, when like, you go to New York, you meet like twenty more people a day than here because. Every time you go there, why yeah. do I need to meet people? You meet people for me, and then yeah, you just introduce right. me to everyone I need to know. But do you really get to know them <laughs> in New York? There's a, it's yeah. a quick change in carousel, isn't it? Such a fast yeah. yeah. That, that is true, too. Yeah. I, I wonder, because I was in, I was yeah. in yeah. New York earlier this year, and I've got quite a few friends who moved out there, like British expats, and I, I really like it, but it's so intense as a place. Yeah. Yeah. It drains me in a way that London doesn't. Yeah. London is so much kind of like, yes. it's, it's village yeah. and Because London ends at 6 p.m., essentially. In New York, you go out and you chase like... That's what I'd like like to change about London though right. which is that there's basically no mm. restaurants there's nowhere to eat apart 20%. from VQ do you know VQ Van Cat? VQ Valdis no v v VQ's, VQ's the one it's that 24 hour restaurant there's one in Chelsea one in Olga right. East I apart from that there's a 24 hour restaurant in it's London. actually good Okay. It's, it's okay. the only one that's Excellent. good. It's a good and point the, you're yeah. making. There's, there's, the no, there's no yeah. night, night, nighttime I remember, economy in London. I remember being Dutch. 24 hours? Okay. Yeah. That's cool. It's really good. We and should go. Irony, they do chicken yeah. and waffles. 4 a.m.? Yeah. Four, chicken and waffles should not be eaten until 2 a.m., I'd say, right? That's like but the, it's like a posh the, chicken and waffles on okay. like a mm, nice okay. plate and stuff like that. You Just find some places, actually, who after, I mean, when we're, you know, you, you can find places like that. Chinatown? I don't know. There's very little. London is, because of the licensing laws here, it's just very scandalous. In yeah. the way of options, when in New York, like mm. that's like a do you find it easier to make corner. friends here in the mood? I mean, how, how do you make so many friends? Yeah. Stephen is like I always name all people in the US uh, hoping they'll come here. Yeah. When people <laughs> visit London, I find that they know more people than I do living here. You know what I mean? Like when Jeremy O'Harris or Janixa comes to London. Like, how do they hang out with so many people mm. that don't, never meet they, me? But, the, but I always find this as a journalist. When I go on a, or when I go on a trip to, mm. to a place to, to um, and I say, say I go to New York and I say to the companies I cover, I want to do a meeting with mm. you. Because I've got this finite amount of time there, they'll all they take yeah. meetings yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I was based That's in New true. York, they'd be like, oh. So yeah. I, I yeah. lie. I say I'm leaving town tomorrow. You want to meet? <laughs> no. Always then pretend you're about urge. to leave. Yeah, because yeah. they always ask the most annoying question, how long are you in town for? Yeah. I've got to admit, I'm yeah. not actually running the Athens Marathon tomorrow. I'm not leaving town. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Last minute. Yeah. yeah. I hate and this people, question. And people <laughs> pretend to be busy, actually. And then, you know, it's better sometimes also, even on a social level, if you want to uh, organize dinner, you have to always book people mm -hmm. way in advance. Yeah. But actually, if you like, you know, say, hey, shout out, who's available tonight? You find yeah. a lot of people are available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to go to more house parties in London. That's yeah. what I realized. Yeah. Like, is Fancy those are the best parties on, on the. Evening. I would say probably on yeah. the airing. On, why not? Like yeah. that's that's. Or even casual, you feel people don't receive a lot. Do people have big parties anymore? V vaguely, v rarely. I feel yeah. like there's. I think the recently. Like oh, I don't recently? know. Maybe it's a. But is it? A, I'm not. Gonna say, is it an age thing? Oh, like, no. does it become? Do house parties become less? I'm. I, yeah. I don't know. 
Okay, it's been one hour. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Bye. Did you cut it? No, but do you feel people are not cooking anymore? Uh, Stephen? No, but he no, means, could, he means like time. proper like parties, you mean? I like. cook all the time. Why, why do you hang out? What do you do during the week, the weekend? What do I do? I do nothing usually. You just mong. No, just I, 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 I do a lot of, we have a lot of work. Like we have really no shortage of yeah. projects. And